morning ladies and gentlemen welcome to the irb invit call hosted by the company for discussing the unaudited financial results for the quarter ended december 2023 we have with us on the call today mr vinod menon mr anil yadav mr rishabh gandhi and ms swapna vengurlekar from irb invit team as a reminder all participants line will be in the listen only mode and after the opening remarks by the management there will be a question and answer session please note that the duration of the call will be 45 minutes and any queries left unanswered after the call can be subsequently mailed to the management for adequate response and resolution please note that this conference is been recorded i now request mr menon to give you an overview of the significant development during the quarter over to you sir thank you so very good morning to all i would like to welcome all the investors and analysts on this call hope you have reviewed our detailed numbers as well as the presentation being investment manager of the invit our endeavor is to maximize the value of our unit holders value can be maximized in two ways either by adding more assets or through efficient financial management we would like to present some interesting data points to our unit holders based on the valuation report total asset size is rupees 8194 crores and the debt is 2416 crores so debt to asset percentage is approximately 29% wage to average life of the debt is approximately 7.5 as i was speaking there is some interesting data points to the unit holders based on the valuation report total asset size is rupees 8194 crores debt is rupees 2416 crores and the debt to asset percentage is approximately 29% the weighted average life of the debt is 7.5 years against average portfolio concession life of 15 years so we will evaluate various options to elongate this debt tenure to increase the distribution irb ham assets the vadodara mumbai package 7 and pathan port mandi are expected to complete in the fy 25 Chittoor Tajo is expected to be completed in FY26. Six months post completion of these projects, they will be available for offer to the trust. We are distributing rupees two per unit for the quarter ended December 31, 2023. This quarter, we will be distributing rupees 1.70 in the form of interest and 0.3. rupees per unit in the form of dividend the trust has announced its maiden distribution in the form of dividend dividend has been distributed by the mvr spv the said spv continues to follow the old tax regime accordingly based on our knowledge the said distribution in the form of dividend shall be exempt in the hands of the unit holders as compared to the corresponding quarter of the previous year we have observed a growth of 11% in the toll revenue the key contributors to the toll revenue growth 
are Jaipur Devli, Tumkut Chitradurga, and Omanur Salem project. The investment manager, on behalf of the trust, continues to evaluate potential investment opportunities. The net debt to value of assets of the trust is 0.3 is to 1, providing sufficient debt capacity for acquiring new assets and the trust continues to have a triple A credit rating from two of the rating agency that is CARE and India Ratings. I would now request Mr. Rushab Gandhi to take you through the financial performance for the quarter and the year. Over to you, Rushab. Thank you, sir. I will now present the financial analysis for the quarter ended December 23 compared with the corresponding quarter of previous year. The total consolidated income for the quarter ended December 23 stood at rupees 283 crores as compared to rupees 285 crores for the corresponding quarter of previous year. The consolidated toll revenue for the quarter ended December 23 improved to rupees 233 crores as against rupees 209 crores for the corresponding quarter of previous year, registering a growth of 12%. EBITDA for the quarter ended December 23 stood at rupees 210 crores as against rupees 179 crores for the corresponding quarter of previous year. Interest cost, which includes interest on premium department, for the quarter ended December 23 stood at rupees 69 crores as against 58 crores in the corresponding quarter of previous year. This is primarily on account of the interest cost from the newly acquired Baroda Team Hammer asset. Depreciation, which includes amortization for the current quarter, stood at rupees 58 crores as against rupees 46 crores for the corresponding quarter of previous year. The profit after tax for the quarter ended December 23 stood at rupees 81 crores as against 100 crores for the corresponding quarter of previous year. Now I will request the moderator to open the session for question and answer. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Dheeraj Dave from Samvad Financial Services. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks a lot for giving me the opportunity and congratulations to Madam Milti for maintaining the distribution at rupees two per unit. My first question is into the portfolio assets. Uh, I refer to slide seven where we get toll performance for Pathan Kot Amritsar project. And uh, in FP24, as per the data, we get around daily toll collection being rupees 4.1 million, vis a vis 4.3 million. And uh, basically, can you explain why there was a drop in December month? Because in November, which was 30 days month, it was 4.3 million. While in December, we are getting 4.3. And, and do we see change in trajectory now? I think uh, Amritsar Pathan Court uh, being a north project typically affected if there is a, uh, if cold increases and if we have a situation like fog, then definitely that impacts overall traffic and that leads a lower collection. But if you look at the earlier month as highlighted by you, the growth was uh, better as compared to the last year. And we expect that momentum should continue beyond January. Okay, so basically it's a seasonal phenomena and and how you see, because I believe that situation is in fact uh, not so great in January also. So do we see uh, collection being on same line or we see marginal drop and expect some improvement? I think January will have some marginal drop as uh, you might have seen from the newspaper that uh, we are seeing a fog situation in few days. So then definitely there will be marginal drop, but I think that should improve from February onwards. 
So that was a one part. And again, connected to same, uh, what do you see Amaravati project when we see that Nagpur bypass or something which was affecting? So we shall expect some, uh, means that thing is over, the project which was metro project which affected our traffic movement. I think the restriction is still on, but sir, uh, one interesting data point that if you look at uh, the September month uh, collection, that was close to 19 crore rupees. And from 19 crores, that has improved to 21.66 crore rupees, roughly 13% growth uh, witnessed uh, in uh, uh, Talega Amravati as compared to the trailing quarter. So I think uh, we believe that it's on a recovery path. And we should, uh, uh, we have not seen a decline from uh, uh, as, far, as far as trailing quarter is concerned. And in fact, there was a robust growth. And if you look at other project also, the growth as, uh, as compared to trailing quarter was close to 5 to 6 percent. Some project have 4 and a half, some 5 and 6. But Talega Amravati uh, was roughly 30 plus percent growth uh, as compared to trailing quarter. And that provides us also a good kind of, uh, from here on, we believe that there will not be any decline on the uh, uh, traffic, but it should start improving. But uh, the restriction which was there, that is still continued. Thanks for this. And if I may squeeze one more, basically, particularly on the expected uh, NCDF calculation for next year, uh, I believe there is some kind of uh, amount which was uh, deferred by NHI, particularly for Tim, uh, Timko Chetraduk project, and that we need to, in fact, start repayment will start probably from FY25, uh, 25 onwards. So what is an expected outflow, and with that expected outflow, what do you see a distribution kind of it, or impact of distribution from FY25 onwards? I think, sir, uh, based on the current cash flow, we should be able to maintain the distribution of rupees 8. But as CEO, sir, has also suggested that uh, if you look at our debt, debt is only 0.3x of the total assets. And the life of the debt is only 7, 7 and a half years, as against the life of asset is more than uh, 15 years. So we are trying to balance out both the things because typically the projects are funded through debt or equity. And your, your equity, that is the unit capital, is uh, costlier than the debt. So mm. our thought process is that we should uh, elongate the debt tenure and uh, at least to uh, 10 to 12 years so that the distribution to the unit holder should increase. We are working on that line. And once we are uh, finalize that number, probably the distribution should increase between 7 to 10 percent from here on. Probably we'll move from 8 to 9. Okay. And just a specific question. What is the kind of expected NHI payment of the deferred uh, premium uh, in FI25 for that Tinkul Chitradu project? I think the deferred premium, apart from the regular premium, uh, in 2022, uh, I think 23, uh, 22, uh, 24, we were paying close to 184 crores kind of premium payment. And that should increase close to 250 crore rupees in uh, 25. Okay. And with that uh, 65 crore also, approximately we see that we can manage the distribution at 8 rupees, assuming everything yes. goes as it kind of is. Yes, yes. Thanks a lot. Wish you all the best. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Satinder Singh Bedi from Enoch. Infotech Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, 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 so, so just uh, two housekeeping questions. So what is the deferred premium outstanding as of 31st of December on account of uh, Tumkur Chitra Durga? Uh, uh, and like you said, that it, we, uh, there will be 250 crore payout in FY25 on account of uh, this project. How much of it would be the annual premium grant, and would there be some part of the over uh, of the new premium deferment that be part of this 250? Yes, it's a uh, 250 is part of uh, uh, including the deferred premium. And total outstanding deferred premium is close to 600 crores uh, at the end of December 23. Is about 600 crores. Uh, yes. Okay, 
Uh, okay, uh, my understanding was that for FY25, our normal premium grant should anyway be in the range of about 260, uh, 265 crores or there. Yes. So is that an incorrect understanding? For FY25, I think uh, 250 to 260 crores is the premium. premium so, so this does not include any premium deferment that uh, we have to pay back? Yes, one thing. So that includes the normal premium, but once uh, we will check and confirm back to you shortly. Yes, right, right, sir. So, okay, uh, okay. Uh, and sir, uh, uh, at the time of the VK1 acquisition, uh, it was estimated that uh, that acquisition should lead to a bump off of about 25, uh, 20 to 25 crores in the profits and hence uh, uh, about 30 pesa bump up in distribution. Uh, when do we expect uh, the impact of that to to flow in? Uh, because uh, the distribution at two uh, actually was was stable even before that acquisition. So, so any any sense on that, sir? Yes. Uh, so VK one uh, uh, probably should increase the payout from FY twenty five. Uh, that is one thing. And uh, second thing, because of the lower collection in Talegaon, Amravati, and Pathan court, that has led some kind of dip in the revenue. Or else, even in this year, we would have paid around 8.3 to 8.4 rupees uh, to the unit holder. Okay. Okay. Right, sir. And what is the cash retained at the trust and the SPVs level as of 31st December? At the Total cash is close to 260 crore rupees. 260 crores, okay. Uh, which includes the payout which will happen now. Yes. yes. Right, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that was very clear. Uh, thank you. Thank you. All the best. Thank you, thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Manish Goel from Thinkwise Wealth Managers. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, sorry, I would like to continue on Tumkur Chitra Durga. The deferred payment outstanding is 600 crores. So when, are, when is this amount uh, uh, to be paid, like over what duration? So I think the deferred premium uh, should start from FY26 uh, uh, till I think uh, another 5 to 6 years. Because uh, I'm just reading the dating report and it says that the deferred premium obligation was approved up to FY24 and uh, FY25 onwards we'll have to pay uh, the amount. Now, if 600 crores is to be paid over six years, then it's uh, additional 100 crores uh, uh, impact for us in the cash flows. So, in such scenario also, you mentioned that we'll be able to maintain uh, uh, distribution of 8 rupees per annum? Actually, as per the premium deferment scheme, the entire premium along with the, the, the entire deferred premium has to be repaid one year prior to the end of the concession period. That is how the policy has been framed. However, we are trying our best to uh, repay this uh, deferred premium within six to seven years from now. That is how it is being planned. But it is all based on the cash flow available and uh, the, pre the deferred premium has to be cleared one year prior to the concession period. So when is that ending, sir? Uh, that concession is, I think, till 2036. Okay. No, I'm just a little worried in terms of because in opening remarks also, it was mentioned that a couple of projects uh, are completing their concession in FY26, uh, which in turn will also lead to lower cash flows for us. And on other side, if we have to pay 100 crores more, then uh, just wondering as to uh, how can we expect it, the payout to remain at uh, 8 rupees. 
So I would like to just draw your attention to the, the concession agreement and waterfall mechanism. Waterfall mechanism for the TC says that toll collection, less OEM payment, less less interest, whatever the surplus will be left, that will be paid as a premium. And if we are able to service the premium, and if any amount is left, that will be utilized for the deferred premium. So the trust, what uh, debt trust has extended to the SPV, that will have a uh, that will have a priority over premium. That is mentioned in the concession agreement itself. So then, whenever the deferred premium will be paid, that will be paid out of the surplus left post the servicing interest to the trust. So considering that, I think we should be able to make the payment of rupees eight, and probably large portion of the uh, premium will be paid after three or four years post uh, uh, FY25. No, I agree, sir. But the point is that on other side, we have been saying that we want to defer our uh, debt uh, schedule payments. Uh, so I'm just like wondering that technically for us this liability does exist and uh, I believe that annual interest rate also we have to uh, keep building on the pending amount uh, and if we probably want to do NPV of the asset then definitely it will take a hit on our NPV, right? I think if you are deferring the uh, debt that has lower cost than the cost of equity. Typically, the NPV should increase. I'm, no, no, I'm saying that if we factor the 600 crores number, uh, yes. which is anyway we have to pay, maybe if we pay uh, after the cash flows improve, but technically we have to pay. So I'm just uh, saying that the NAV, what we have disclosed, does it factor this payout of 600 crores? Yes, yes. Uh, well, value factors this... Uh, deferred premium also in their valuation. And assuming that if we don't uh, buy any more assets, then uh, probably for us, yield to maturity would be what? Today we are paying out 8 rupees, but if I am holding till the end of concession of all the projects which probably yes. get over, then yes. what would be our yield to the maturity? So I think the yield to maturity will be somewhere between uh, 13 and a half to 15 percent, depending upon the what kind of growth you are assuming in the uh, uh, traffic growth and the kind of inflation you build in your projection. Uh, okay, no, no. What I'm trying to say that we have a definite life of these projects, uh, yes. uh, five projects what we have. Yes. Uh, so ideally, there is a definite life where it will yes. probably concession period will get over. So if yes. we were to build in that uh, uh, with 13% or 12% growth, annual growth rate, uh, both yes. on traffic and inflation, uh, yes. I'm just trying to understand that uh, probably will these 8 rupees continue over a life of till the concession is there? That is what I'm trying to understand. 8 rupees will continue and probably from uh, latter years, from after 2029 or so, that should increase to uh, uh, significantly increase to uh, rupees 12 or 13 rupees because at that time there will not be any debt left on the trust and uh, that will significantly increase in the latter part of the life. Okay, so basically unit holders will get back its capital and in turn then the property it will have the impact on the NAV also and result in uh, share price. Yes, so basically if I will I will just give you an example. If you are investing 70 rupees today and over the, that is the outflow for you and uh, over the life of concession the trust will pay the payout and based on 9.5% revenue growth the IRR on today's date will be close to uh, 13 and a half to 15 percent uh, what I had discussed. Okay, and last question in terms of like uh, we have a lot of room on the uh, base on our debt equity. So are we contemplating to buy more assets and in turn probably which in turn can help us uh, to increase our uh, payouts? Yes, we are continuous uh, uh, reviewing the project and uh, at appropriate time we will add the asset. 
and in fact there are three assets which will be uh, becoming eligible to available for the trust to evaluate by two will be uh, by end of this uh, fy25 and and another will be the fy26 you can be just if you can share uh, broadly the total value of these three assets uh the total value for three assets will be in excess of uh, two and a half thousand crores Okay, wonderful. That will be on the base of eight thousand crores. What you mentioned. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Yash Dedia from Maximal Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Um, uh, sir. So just to understand one previous point that you have mentioned, so you have taken as assumption of around nine and a half percent basis, around five percent growth in traffic as well as inflation, and that is yielding you thirteen and a half to fifteen percent IRR. Yes. Okay. Okay. Understood. Um, uh, secondly, sir, uh, now uh, you know IRB also has some private in with with GIC, if I'm not wrong. So then, how uh, you know when these assets are being developed by the sponsor? How are you deciding which uh, particular invite uh, should take uh, part in this? I think the both the invite uh, has different object. Private invite is a development platform, and uh, GIC has invested close to four thousand crores in FY20. Uh, and uh, till FY23, there was no distribution. So it's the only, and in fact, there was uh, additional capital requirement by the private investment which GIC and IRB has already infused. So it's a development platform where uh, the long-term projects are getting developed in the, uh, the private investment, and those projects will not be suited for the public investment because public investment is a vehicle where unit holder expects. Uh, Steady kind of distribution, and with a stabilized cash flow, if we can buy some asset which can improve the yield to the unit holder, that is that can be accepted by the unit holder. So our endeavor is to buy the balance asset where the life will not be too long, but also it will not have negative carry. Because if I will try to buy some toll asset with a 15 to 20 years life, that will have a negative carry to begin with. And which may not be liked by the unit holder. So considering that, we are eyeing for the ham asset, and if we can add some toll asset as well, where the distribution of the to the unit holder should not decrease significantly, those kind of uh, asset we will be looking going forward. So you are looking more like uh, some assets which are already matured and maybe have only got five to ten years of life left. Yes. Okay, understood. And sir, there was one media report regarding uh, this Yedeshi Aurangabad tollway where the arbitration of 1720 crore was awarded. So, which entity does it pertain to in IRB group? It's a part of uh, private invest, but uh, the amount will a uh, large portion of the amount will flow to EPC contractor that is the IRB because it's a construction related uh, compensation. And EPC contract was uh, was executed by IRB. The amount will due to IRB. Understood. And in sir, in our calculations in NAV, you said that the 600 crore has been adjusted, uh, you know, by the valuation guy. Now, what about you know? Do we have some of the arbitration and potential positive outcomes? Uh, Which uh, which have also been considered in the calculation of NAV and what are these uh, particular outcomes and what kind of flows can we expect uh, going forward like like for example this arbitration award. So I think uh, in that uh, if you uh, uh, if you have uh, tracked earlier, we have got 518 days of uh, extension in Pathan Court uh, project, and that matter is pending in the Supreme Court. Once uh, that order comes in our favor, that will be basically uh, extension in the concession period. 
And apart from that, there is no other positive outcome that we expect out of any of our assets. No, at least those are not factored in the uh, valuation. And this extension of Patan Court, sir, would be of what value or uh, how many years, if you can give some sense? Well, I think Patan Court is doing 40 to 45 lakh rupees uh, per day and 518 crores to translate around 225 crores of rupees in the current terms. Understood, sir. Understood. And, uh, sir, finally, now, you know, what we have seen in the listed universe, there are so many uh, players which are not want because of the competitive intensity, they are not doing EPC and now they are ha doing more of HAM. So in HAM, uh, you know, uh, because of their requirements, they are downselling the assets. So we have seen a lot of, uh, you know, larger players um, uh, coming out with divestment uh, with other entities. So, you know, are we not able to, you know, because there is a willingness from their side to sort of divest these uh, operational ham assets, so why are we not able to get hold of some of these assets at a good valuation like uh, what we have been seeing uh, in the news reports? I think uh, yeah, if you uh, uh, track the past star con call also, we have also said that we have evaluated more than 25 to 30 assets, uh, the, which was the third party asset. And there the expectation of the players are close to two times of the book. And secondly, the OM considered by uh, on their project, we believe that that is not adequate and that will lead to some kind of bleeding if the trust acquires those assets. So unless and until expectation of the seller does not come down, if there is no value added to the trust, there is no meaning to add liability to the trust. No, sir. Most of these deals, at least what is available in the public space, has been done around 1.4, 1.5 times book value. I think what we have heard recently, that was the large deal that was close to 1.7. Because of the size, it is close to 1.7. Then definitely that, that does not provide any kind of upside for the trust to begin with. Mm -hmm. But anything in the pipeline for you from the third party uh, assets? That we do continuous evaluation. If we are able to reach uh, at a final stage, definitely we will be sharing those details. Understood, sir. Thank you and all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Tanvir Sur, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, sir, I'm referring to uh, slide number uh, 14, which is uh, the annuity from VK1 Ham Asset. Sir, so I'm actually a little uh, new in the, new to this uh, entire uh, trust in it. So just trying to understand uh, how do these annuities come in? Like, uh, like are we already getting cash flows from... Uh, this particular project, uh, is it like on an annual basis? So basically, uh, in case of a ham asset, post construction completion, the annuities are received on semi annual basis. So there will be 30 annuities which will be received over the period of 15 years. Okay, and are we already getting it for this project? So we, this project was acquired in October last year. So since then, we have received three annuities and we have been getting them on time. Okay, so the so the chart, so the bar graph that is shown, that, so those are the three annuities that you've been receiving, right? And this project is entirely complete? Yeah, yeah, it was completed uh, prior to acquisition by the trust. <coughs> okay, 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 all right. Uh, okay, okay, so so any, uh, any changes in traffic movement or all of that doesn't impact this project at all, right? I mean, I'm guessing this is not a toll collection, so... This this will just be a fixed amount that will keep coming, correct? Absolutely, you are right. So one portion would be the annuity part, which would be fixed amount, which will be issued on seminal basis. Apart from that, we'll get interest on annuity, which will be uh, linked to bank rate plus three percent, and that also will receive on uh, outstanding annuities and O and O and payment also. Okay, okay. So that's how you keep getting the incremental value from. Uh, I mean. Every uh, every annuity, right? 
yes you are right okay 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 thank you so much thank you thank you very much the next question is from the line of satinder singh bedi from anok infotech limited please go ahead yeah uh, thanks uh, thanks for the follow up uh, Uh, sir, so, uh, you you mentioned about uh, uh, the trust uh, considering increasing the the weighted average life of debt, okay, to align it uh, uh, more with the uh, pending uh, concession period, uh, so as to reduce the current interest obligations, uh, thereby supporting increase in dist- distributions. Uh, by when uh, do we expect this to start playing out in terms of flow into distributions? i think uh, we are still in talk with the uh, lender and probably by end of this financial year we should be clear uh, uh, with the what kind of uh, improvement it should lead to the distribution so i think uh, uh, from now one quarter uh, we should be able to uh, inform to the unit holder right sir i think it's a, it's a great step and i would urge uh, the management to uh, look at this Mainly because uh, I think uh, uh, it's a great step in terms of improving distributions. Okay, uh, and what is the current cost of funds uh, as of thirty first of December? Uh, exit rate? Eight point seven percent. Eight point seven percent is uh, okay. And so there was a, uh, uh, a pending arbitration at uh, at Pathan Court, uh, Amritsar. Any update on that? Uh, We had probably about forty forty five crores of uh, expectation from that uh, settlement. Any update on that, sir? So the interim award only has come now. So in that, uh, some some amount has been declared as uh, payable. So the calculations are uh, supposed to be done by both the parties and then sent to the arbitrators, who will decide the uh, final payout amount. So that is still in mm-hmm. progress. Only the interim award. We are expecting the final award in the coming month. In the, in the coming month, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. That's that's good news. And so, finally, one last question. Yeah, the concession period has been increased. That is for sure. Concession yes. period would be increased by four seventy-two days. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yes